Okay. Let's go talk to people in this camp. Hey. You got a deep voice, damn girl. I am not. I am not a brigand. How rude. Hey. Welcome to our base camp. I have a feeling this will be a long-winded explanation. Okay. <laughs> I assume you're familiar with the Officers Academy on the grounds of Garrick Mark Monastery, yes? If I'm honest. The three young people you assisted earlier are the heads of the Academy's three houses. <gasps> Really? But you'll find the other students, teachers, and even members of the Knights of Saros here at this camp. Why? I feel you caught us in the middle of an annual outdoor activity. Oh, okay, that's why. Carried out at the beginning of the Academy school year. Mm. I love how there's just random bits of dialogue thrown in here. The situation became quite the mess when the band of brigands attacked us. Wish we could chat at Lake, but it seems the three class heads wish to speak with you. Oh, do they now? You. Alas, I cannot keep you all to myself. This is a great opportunity for you to bond with the rescuees. Do I have to? Hmm. It's you. We've held these kinds of outdoor activities countless times, but I've never seen anything like this happen. Plus, we've got three high-ranking noble children here, so the guard was more than double that of the usual year. To think that they were nearly killed by some pack of base brigands. It's a real mess, make no mistake. Now I have to find a way to explain it all to Lady Rhea? Ugh. I have a very simple solution to that. Just make Alois do it. <laughs> huh, it's you. You're that new merc, right, Chez? The boar says you had some skill. You'll have to give me a demonstration before we head out. Hell yeah. Agree. Deal, I could clear some time before sunrise. Looking forward to it. Support points significant or <laughs> I messed it up already. <laughs> Support points signify the strength of a bond between two units. Units gain support points by giving appropriate answers in conversation, performing actions and that make the other happy, or heading into battle together. Okay. Oh, hey, uh. oh you're that mercenary. It's great to meet you. I'm Annette, and this is my best friend Mercedes. Hello there. Nice to make your acquaintance. Have you already spoken with the others? Well, I technically have spoken with some. Let's see. Not yet, but I'm planning to. Suppose that no means none of us know all that much about the others. Is. We only just started the Officers Academy, so my grasp on the other blue lions is tenuous at best. Gotcha. Oh, it's you. The dude. <laughs> the dude. Honestly, he's one of the best characters. My thanks. You assisted his highness and have my gratitude. I will see this debt repaid. Um. Uh -uh. I just took a little bit at the end there. I see. <laughs> okay. All right, buddy. You have my thanks. Let me begin by first conveying what is he? Okay, I just saw his mouth moving a lot. Let me begin by first conveying my gratitude to you, Shiz. We are in your debt. Speaking of which, also I examined a map earlier, and the village where you are headed seems to be a little more to the east. That's nice. Thanks. I appreciate it. I checked the map earlier, but couldn't tell where in the woods I actually was. <laughs> Well, I'm glad I could be of service. I hope you're able to reach your destination this time. By the way. We'll be staying, staying until sunrise, yes? I hope you'll take the opportunity to converse with the others here. 
Of course, now that I've sprung the idea on you so suddenly, you'll likely find yourself at a loss as to whom you ought to speak to. This? On that note, I would be more than happy to give you an introduction to any of the Blue Lion House students. Okay. Your interest flatters me, but I'm afraid I find myself unsure of where to begin. Perhaps I'll have thought of a topic when next we speak. But uh, you're leaving for that village soon, aren't you? Whoa! <laughs> Imbue attacks with lightning. Dedu hails from the land of Dusker. Perhaps you've heard of it. He tends to keep to himself. But he possesses one of the kindest hearts of anyone I know. I'm proud to call him my... Vassal. Speak to him. Come on, Dimitri. Is it so hard to call him your fucking friend, dude? Felix is the son of Duke Fraldarius. He has a sharp wit and even sharper tongue. But... He's a good person at his core. I can attest to that. Felix is great. He has always admired strength above all else in a fighter. I imagine the two of you will make fast friends. Honestly, my favorite of the Blue Lions for sure is Felix. I only first met her here at the Academy. She seems a gentle soul with great inner strength. Yeah, that's accurate. From what I understand, she has traveled far and wide throughout both the Empire and the Kingdom. Perhaps that explains her demeanor. In the far south of Fargus lies a manor by the name of Castle Gaspar. Ash is the adopted son of that castle's lord, Lenato. He's an honest boy, well deserving of our trust. I'd like to get to know him better someday, should the opportunity arise. Bro, you literally could just go up and say hello? Annette is the hardest worker in the entirety of the Blue Lion House. She is truly brilliant. I could stand to learn from her single-minded devotion, if only a little. Sylvain is the son of Margrave Gautier. You may have already noticed, but he's something of a womanizer. That may be putting it lightly, in fact. Sylvain is an idiot. But despite his apparent indifference, he possesses great cunning and is quicker on his feet <laughs> than anyone else here. I've known him long, so I'm well aware. Ingrid is the daughter of Count Galatea, and she is far more gallant than your run-of-the-mill knight. She has ever been straight-laced and diligent, even when we were but children. It is not an uncommon sight to find her scolding Sylvain for his indiscretions. <laughs> yeah, you got that right. Speaking of... Thanks. Hello, friend. You're the one who helped Dimitri, right? Well, we all like you for that, so if you need a meal, it's on me. I'm grateful as well. I'd offer my thanks for the meal too, but I heard that you'll be leaving us shortly. Oh, and I don't believe I got your name. My name is Shez. Name Shez. Keep it in mind in case you ever need a heavy hitter. <laughs> I'll do just that. Well, it's unfortunate we're putting we're <laughs> putting parting ways here. I suspect we may have a chance to meet again in the future. Not good. Shame we don't have the time to get to know each other a little better though. Like you care, Sylvain. Oh. Ash! What a good lad! Hey there. Oh, you must be that mercenary I've been hearing about. I'm Ash, I'm a student at Karen Mock Officers Academy. Do you know about the Academy? You see, there are three houses, each based on where a person is from. Yeah, I've heard of it. Oh, I've heard of it, alright. One of my employers a little ways back just couldn't shut up about how he'd gone to the place. I could see that. Lots of influential nobles and royals from all over study at the academy. I actually find it pretty daunting to always be surrounded by the rich and powerful. Hmm. It's a lot easier to talk to someone like you. What's that supposed to mean? Ah, yes. The second best professor. 
I'm Hannah Maiden, a professor at the Office of the Academy. I heard tale of your recent exploits. Wish to express my thanks. Point on another matter. Do you possess a crest? <laughs> What's a crest? <laughs> crest is a magic noble thing, right? Hannah is tall. God, look at it. Like, she has this just fully staring upwards. Listen well now, Chris are a power that dwells in the blood, and are passed down through the generations from parent to child. Who knows if Chris makes cell in magic, or perhaps has the ability to wield powerful weapons known as hero relics. When I heard about what you did, I thought perhaps you were in possession of one, but seeing your reaction, I imagine you never looked into the matter. If you were to come to my residence at the monastery, I could take the time to conduct a full investigation if you like. I actually am curious if Shez has a crest. That'd be an interesting thing to find out. Oh, the third best professor. I failed so many people today that I never want to look at a bandage again. Oh, and who do we have here? Oh wait, don't say. Let me guess. Your brave vagabond knight who appeared to boldly protect me from the brigands earlier. No. What? No, I'm just Shez. Well, in that case, I'm Manuela, a woman of many faces, teacher, doctor, songstress. Though I have worked myself to the very bone today, so right now I'm merely a sad and lonesome woman. Yeah. Listen. Hello, I am called Petra. I am finding you to be quite fascinating. I'm Shez. I'm technically a mercenary, though I guess right now I'm just kind of... Kind of a drifter. I wonder why he tells Petra this. That has much difficulty. I do not have understanding. Where are you drifting yeah, to? I don't know. Uh, through the world, you know, just sort of kicking around with no real end goal. Edelgard. Thank you. There you are. Thank you for your assistance in the previous battle. I'd like to discuss your future if you have a moment. If you find yourself with no place to go after. You accomplish your objective. I'm hoping we might hire you on with the Empire. I can promise you'll be handsomely paid, including the work you did today. So, what do you say? I say you're definitely a go-getter, that's for sure. Why do you want to hire me? I'm not usually hired into service by people quite so high up the food chain. Why the special attention? I value your talent now that I have had the ability to see it firsthand. By the by, have you spoken with the others here in camp? If you'd like, I could tell you a little bit about the students in my own house, the Black Eagles. Well, you're certainly not timid. You do realize you're addressing the heir to the Imperial throne, yes? Yeah, sure. Still, I suppose I admire that sort of freedom. It must be nice not to have your lot in life decided for you. See a little bit of childhood trauma coming up there. Hubert of House Vestra is my attendant. His family is unusual in that they're noble, but lack territory of their own. <laughs> Hubert of House Vestra is an asshole. Hubert is deeply loyal to me, and you can trust him completely. In fact, I imagine he's quite grateful for what you've already done. Oh no, I don't trust a hair on his head. That's Dorothea Arnold. She's an up-and-coming songstress in a famous imperial opera company. Or she was, at least. For some reason, she abandoned her musical career and enrolled in the Officers' Academy. She has a very magnetic personality, which I'm sure you'll see. I don't recall what her actual reason was in the game. You've spoken with Ferdinand? One conversation will explain him far better than I can. One conversation and I guarantee he says, I am Ferdinand von Eyre like six times. He's the heir to an influential house, which drives him to excel. But he can be quite the handful sometimes. One of our classmates usually stays holed up in the dormitory instead of coming on these assignments. Her name is Bernadetta. And she's adorable. 
If you bump into her, don't be surprised if she screams and runs away. That's sort of her thing. Caspar is the second-born son of a great and noble house. But as he's not the heir, you might say he joined the Academy to make his own way. He's also really bland and boring and is just kind of there. War and fighting are his sole pursuits, so I bet the two of you will get along just fine. Petra isn't from the Empire. She's the granddaughter of the King of Bridget, which is an archipelago situated off our western coast. You'll find her a quick study, a gifted fighter, and endlessly curious. But always come prepared to talk, because she'll definitely want to pick your brain. She also is hot. Surely you know someone like Linhart. He's as bright as they come, yet just as lazy as well. He's also my spirit animal. <laughs> That's simply how he is, though. I can't force him to apply himself, but he'll come around, most likely. What did you need? Can't believe they talked me into going on this trip. It'll be fun, they said. Nothing ever happens. And then bam, disaster and danger everywhere. I thought I was going to die out there. I was swinging my spear at anything that got within range. And some girl from the officer's academy showed up and led me to safety. I tell you, kid these days are graceful and strong. Nothing like the useless punks for my day. Okay, if you say so, buddy. Uh, hello. Hello. You must be the mercenary Edie told us about. I'm Dorothea. You've heard about the Officers Academy, right? Well, pretty much all of this year's students from Black Eagle House are here at the moment. Well, except for Bernadetta, which is sadly typical. She stayed behind because she was terrified of the idea that we might be attacked in the woods. Can't believe she ended up being right. <laughs> Oh, sorry, didn't mean to ramble. Has anyone ever told you you're surprisingly easy to talk to? Ah, yes. This asshole. Hmm. Ah, yes. You're the mercenary we, we happened to cross. Oh, thanks. Well, I harbored some reservations about you. In fact, you made the juice to Lady Hedogar. If you did, I offer my gratitude. You sure? I'm not sure if that was a compliment or an insult. How about you explain these reservations to me? I apologize, it's my gratitude, you not shine too fully. As for the other matter, my thoughts are mine alone. What an asshole. I don't like him. How may I help you? Thank you for cooperating with the heads of the three houses. It seems like the class heads served as decoys to draw out most of the thieves before finding an opportunity to flee. Thanks to that, the others managed to hold fast with uh, only light injuries. Still, it would have been tragic had any of the heads been seriously injured or worse. I'm just grateful for all your help. Sure, buddy. Hey, Linhart, wake up! Look, I get that you're tired, but we're leaving at the crack of dawn, remember? The bandit attack stole my chance for sleep, so I must... Hmm? Uh, who might you be? I'm Shez. <laughs> um, um, Shez. Merc. Got caught up fighting with those bandits earlier, which is how I ended up here. Wait, so you're the one that took out their boss? You were amazing. I should have given chase and knocked him around a bit myself, but oh well. I bet he says I am Ferdinand von Eyre. Well, well, the mercenary who cut down the leader of those thieves. I must say, that was quite the capable display you put on back there. <laughs> I am Ferdinand von Eyre. I fucking knew it. Legitimate scion of the Eyre family, the foremost house of the Empire. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've never heard of you. <laughs> it cannot be. My stars! <laughs> You've truly never heard of House Iron? I should think even a base sellsword such as yourself would have passing familiarity. Bro. <laughs> what, what, what does that even mean? I am on it. 
clearly I must work harder as the beacon for common folk, so they might cry the name of my family from one end of the continent to the other. Buddy, keep dreaming. <laughs> hey ah, yes, the best boy. Thanks. Hey, friend, appreciate what you did back there. We'd have been in a world of hurt without you. Oh, and regarding compensation, Halloween told me not to pay you personally. I guess they want to handle it as a church thing. Sorry about that. Hey, as long as I get paid, I don't care who's handing over the coin. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely a mercenary, all right. Speaking of... If you talk to the others here How's at camp, that? I can tell you a little bit about the students in my Golden Deer house. Who, me? I'm more curious about you, personally. If you don't have anything better to do, I'd be glad to have you join us at Garrick Mock. Well, he don't talk about himself much. Have you met him yet? At first, I thought he was real serious and persnickety. He's also an asshole. Just in a different way. But that image shattered pretty quick once I noticed him chatting up every girl in the monastery. Hilda's the only daughter of Duke Goneril. Seems like she had a pretty cushy life growing up. Which means she's gotten into the habit of slacking off and making other people do things for her. Hilda's also great and has a great axe. He's a pretty friendly guy. Though it'd be nice if he talked about something other than muscles. He comes from a merchant family, but his parents died in an accident. He's had it pretty rough. And yet he's still Mr. Happy. Don't ever treat her like a child. I made that mistake earlier and she nearly took my head off. She is <laughs> the best sassy child. She's clearly the youngest out of this year's students, so I don't get what the big deal is. Just another pampered noble, I guess. Ignatz likes the great outdoors. Definitely more than the rest of us, anyway. He's the second son of a merchant family, but says he wants to be a knight. He doesn't really seem suited for it, though. Maybe his parents are making him do it. Nah. Oh, Marianne? She's Margrave Edmund's daughter, but that's all I know about her. She doesn't interact with the other students at all. I'll admit, she intrigues me. She just needs a hug. Leone wants to be a mercenary. I bet you two would have lots to talk about. Leone's kind of annoying. You're both pretty frank, too. I just hope you're not as obsessed with saving money as she is. I mean, she's great, but she's kind of annoying. Looks like Dawn's almost here. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. hey, you're that mercenary who helped Claude out of that little jam. I heard you're super strong, so I was kind of picturing you as one of those huge bodybuilders or something. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to disappoint, I'm just your average guy. Too average if you ask me. Talk about a letdown. <laughs> oh, come on, I'm just joking. You're only half joking. You're pretty easy to talk to, so I couldn't help myself. Anyways, thanks for helping Claude out. Hey, you're a new face. Are you a student from one of the other houses? You must be the mercenary we've been hearing so much about. What was your name again? It's Chez. What house are you guys with? We're in Claude's house, the Golden Deer, but we're just regular old common folk. Due to the nature of Lester, we have more students from the commoner class than the other houses. I'd imagine you're a commoner yourself, what with being a mercenary and all. Hell if I know. These two idiots. Oh, um, Hello. you're that mercenary everyone's talking about. Shez, was it? You're not attempting to curry favor with the children of the nobility in pursuit of nefarious aim, are you? Oh, Sethia. No. Uh -uh. Just saw folks in trouble and helped him out. Didn't even know they were noble until afterward. I see. And do you think our mercenary friend is someone worthy of trust, Marianne? What, me? Uh... I'm busy. Well, either way, we need to be going. We're busy. Busy standing the fuck around. Jeez. Hmm. Ah, it is you. You're way too tall. You must be the famed mercenary of the woods. You stepped in... 
unbidden aid to aid Claude. What? Well, you're confusing me with your noble speech. As the noble representative of the Lester Alliance, I must offer you my thanks. Eh. Whatever you say, pal. See you around. Wait a wait just a moment. If you are indeed a mercenary, then you should hope to gain influence with me. No, no, not you. Anybody but you. Hell, I'd even take Ferdinand. After all, I am Lawrence Hellman Gloucester. Ha 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 ha. I would rather hang out with Ferdinand than Lawrence. Lawrence is the worst. Well, almost. Hey, aren't you the merc who helped out Claude and the others? I'm actually going to become a mercenary myself. That's why I enrolled at the Officers Academy. Right on. Do it. In that case, I hope we end up working together. Thanks, I'll give it all I got. I'm going to work myself to the bone so I can be just as strong as the captain someday. Ah, yes. She thinks she's Captain Gerald's apprentice. She's also not that tall. She's just standing on a hill. Do you know about the three houses of the Officers Academy? I only ask because you seem a little bit dense. No offense. Anyway, you've got the Black Eagle's house, which is home to the folks of the Adrestian Empire. Then there's the Blue Lion's house, which is made up of individuals from the Holy Knights of Fargus. What are your thoughts? And finally, there's the Golden Deer house, which is people from the Leicester Alliance. Hey. Greetings. Alois told me all about what happened. Thank you for assisting the class heads. Had anything happened to the students, we all would have paid in heartache and worse. It reminds me of the previous term when a student who returned home from the academy went missing and... Ah, oh, forgive me, I'm rambling. Okay, I see they're setting up that plot point already. Ah, oh, Shez, have you spoken with the house leaders yet? Concerning. What, you're leaving? But that won't do. Actually, I was hoping I could ask something of you. Would you hear me out? What if I say no? <laughs> no. Oh, I see. I'm trapped in this camp until I say yes. Fine. That's concerning. If I'm honest. My sincere apologies for asking this of you. I know you're heading for Remire Village in order to find Gerald's mercenaries, but well. Perhaps you might consider changing your mind and accompanying us to Garagmach Monastery instead. Literally, why? And why would I do that, exactly? <laughs> See? He gets it. Because you've done us a great service and we don't have the means in camp to properly reward you. So? At the monastery, however, we can repay your kindness in full. Also, between you and me, this evening's turn of events was quite the embarrassment for the church. I see how it is. We allowed students of the Officers Academy out of our sight, and house leaders of great political consequence at that. And then they crossed swords with bandits. If word got out, well, let's just say it would sit poorly with everyone. That's a bullshit excuse, Alois, because like, Five minutes into the game in like three houses right like there's all oh, they got attacked by bandits and then literally like the next day it's like your first mission go out fight bandits that's bullshit you're not upset that they fought bandits they're gonna do it again so you see why we must ensure you are well compensated also there may be some papers for you to sign perhaps in blood um that doesn't sound good. This sounds more like hush money than a reward. Yes, that's exactly what I told the fool knight who suggested it. Me, I just as soon send you on your way, but I fear I'm obligated to escort you back. Anyway, the whole thing will be much easier if you simply agree to come along. Just as a formality, of course. I think that was a threat. And here I thought he was a big softie. Well, what do you think? Garrick Mock is in the opposite direction of where we need to be, but this man seems rather set on having us accompany them. Hmm. I guess I have no choice. You make a poor case, Alois, but I can see where this is heading. I'll come with you to the monastery. 
but I'm not staying a single minute longer than I have to. Bless you, my friend. What a noble soul you are. I'd say you saved my bacon, but that would be utterly hammy. <sighs> Luis, has anyone ever told you that you're... Don't. Some truths are simply too painful to bear. <laughs> That's their excuse for allowing him to make more puns. While I'm no expert, I fear the poor man's heart couldn't handle the shock. Oh, he'd be fine. Hmm? Told me what? Uh, told you how dashing you are in that armor. Not just any man could pull off that look. Ah, you like it? Wonderful. I admit, I've received no small share of positive comments on it. Oh, okay, so everyone makes that same decision to tell him his armor looks good instead of that his puns are bad. Interesting. There's a grand story behind every last ding and dent. Enough to keep me talking for a week. Why, take this one here. We heard you'll be joining us at Garrick Mock. Perhaps somewhat unwillingly, I might add? Wow. Good to know y'all were just listening in. I know this wasn't in your plans, but if it lets us get to know each other better, perhaps it will prove worth it in the end. Eh. Unwilling or not, we've got a long road ahead, so let's try to keep the mood light. I hesitate to ask this considering you're only here because of us, but, well, are you sure about this decision? The last thing we want is to delay you from your own business. The Knights may seem unwilling to bend, but it's not as if you have no say in the matter. No, it really is as if I have no say in the matter. No one gets a say when they're up against a squadron of knights. No, I suppose not. Apologies again for dragging you into this mess. Yes, yes, that's quite enough chatter. Let's save our energy for the road. To the monastery! Listen, I know this one's on me. I'm the one who roped you into coming back to camp after all. But I'll find a way to make it up to you, I promise. Mm, thanks, bud. Thanks, Claude. I know you will. Hey, hurry up back there or we'll leave you behind. No shit, I could stay behind. Cool. You know you've had a busy day when you rub shoulders with the heirs to the Empire, the Kingdom, and the Alliance. You don't say. I think they're a fascinating group of people myself, but what do you make of them? They're a bunch of idiots. It seems like Edelgard thinks high enough of me. She's got this elegant air about her, but somehow doesn't hold any disdain for mercenaries. It feels like Dimitri's always checking in on me every chance he gets. He'll definitely make a good king. The kind <laughs> who looks after his people. <laughs> sure. Claude's a laid-back kind of guy who doesn't really strike me as noble. And I mean that in a good way. Something tells me he's going to be easy to work with. Yeah, probably. <laughs> of course, you only pick up on their rosy qualities. You really are a delight. Have I told you that lately? Arvel, you're great, dude. Still, you'd better pick up the pace before you vex these people any further. 